David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Today I have for you a brand new pen from Estherbook, and that pen is called the Esty. Now, there's a lot to go over in regard to this new pen, so this review is going to be a bit longer than normal, so I'll get right into it. What I'm going to do is go over the parts and features of the Estherbook Esty, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for, I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. And stay tuned uh, to learn how you could win this very pen courtesy of Goulet Pens and Kenro Industries, who provided this pen for review and for me to give one away to one of you. Uh, Esterbrook is a brand that was founded by a gentleman by the name of Richard Esterbrook back in 1858. Um, after he saw the trend in Britain moving from hand-cut quill pens to one with steel nibs, uh, he really noticed that there was no steel nib manufacturers in the United States. Uh, the company quickly grew and it wasn't long before Esterbrook was the largest manufacturers of pen nibs in the world. Uh, they stayed around for over a hundred years producing low cost, cost uh, reasonably high quality fountain pens, um, a lot of which had swappable nibs. In the early 1970s, uh, the company actually closed down and the trademarks were abandoned. Uh, eventually, a man by the name of Robert Rosenberg uh, re-registered the trademark and relaunched the brand. Now, I won't delve too much into this, uh, but when the brand was relaunched about four years ago, um, it wasn't really well received by the community. Uh, the main issue that people had was that the new pens didn't necessarily harken back to any of Estherbrook's vintage models and had no real association with the brand's history. Uh, people felt it was more of a, a marketing ploy than a true revival of a beloved vintage brand. Now, personally, I did not have strong feelings on the issue, but many in the community were very passionate about their dissent. Uh, as of last spring, Estherbrook was acquired by Kenro Industries and a new era of Estherbrook was born. Uh, the pen I have for you today, uh, it called the Esty, is the first from that new partnership to be released. Okay, that's more than enough backstory, so let's get to this interesting pen. Uh, the pen arrives in this box. Uh, it's kind of covered in a red knit material that kind of reminds me of a knit tie. Um, I'm not a big fan of knit ties, but I do like this box. It's something different. There is a magnetic seal on the front, and it opens to reveal a bunch of stuff. Um, first of all, there is a use and care guide with some uh, warranty information. Uh, and then we have a standard international cartridge, black, I believe. Uh, and then we have a, a cute little pouch, which contains something pretty cool, which I'll go over here in a bit. And then we have a pen. This is the Esterbrook Esty. Uh, Esty being the uh, nickname of the Esterbrook brand in vintage pen circles. Uh, this is the Cobalt Blue model. Um, it's also available in a tortoise finish uh, as well as all black. Uh, there is an oversized model which is slightly larger and only available in black as well. Um, and these pens are available with either gold or silver colored trim. Um, I really like the uh, the variance and chatoyance of this material. Um, I do like that it's a bit dark, so a lot of the colors and shading are more subtle. Uh, let's start by taking a look at the end of the cap. Uh, it's rounded, uh, and the cap is all one piece with no finial or cap band. Uh, the clip is not flashy, uh, but I feel that the size and uh, style is appropriate and complements the pen well. The cap angles up a bit at the end, and it is engraved with Esterbrook and filled with silver paint. Uh, on the pens with gold trim, uh, the lettering is filled with gold paint. Uh, there is uh, an angled step down to the barrel. Uh, the barrel is straight, uh, and then it tapers down to a rounded point to match the uh, top of the cap. The cap screws off, uh, and there is a spring-loaded inner cap on the SD. Uh, this system is uh, similar to that in the slip and seal mechanism that you'll find on the Platinum 3776. Uh, it helps seal off the nib to prevent the ink from drying out. The only downside of this system uh, is that when capping the pen, you have to apply a little more pressure in order for the threads to engage. Once you remove this cap, what we have here is a number six Yovo nib. Uh, on it is engraved Esterbrook and 1858, the year the company was founded. As with most new Yovo nibs, this one is very nice. Uh, I find this medium to be extremely smooth for a steel nib. It really glides across the page. And here's a look at the plastic feed. 
The section is only angled slightly, and there's a very small flare at the end. Uh, at the end of the section, there's a silver colored band, uh, then a single wide thread. Now, the space the thread takes up is very small, so the SD can uh, be fully capped or uncapped with a little over half a twist on the barrel. The threads transition right into the rest of the barrel, which begins with a slightly tapered silver colored ring, which serves to minimize the step up from the threads. Now, while I typically prefer a larger flare at the end of the section, I do find this section to be comfortable uh, even for longer writing sessions. The cap does post, and I will say that you have to post it with a bit of purpose. Uh, if you do it too lightly, then the, this specific pen has a tendency not to stay put, but if you get it on there, it'll stay just fine. And I find that the cap is light enough that for me, it doesn't back weight the pen or throw off the balance at all. The Esterbrook SD accepts standard international cartridges and a converter is provided. Uh, since the uh, section housing is metal, eye dropping this pen would not be recommended. Uh, now, I had mentioned previously that one of the knocks against some of the pre previous rebranded Esterbrook pens were that they lacked an association with the company's history. Well, Kenro has addressed that uh, with the SD by incorporating a very cool new feature. And that's where this pouch comes in. Now, this pouch is sold separately. Um, it's not included with uh, every pen. Um, vintage Esterbrooks are well known for having some fantastic nibs. And what you can purchase here is a section that you could use with a vintage Esterbrook nib, which is a great offering. On top of that, when you purchase this nib adapter, they also include a random vintage Esterbrook nib. The one I received is a fine stub. There are several different varieties of vintage nibs, and while what you receive with this adapter will be random, uh, vintage Esterbrook nibs are readily available on eBay. Uh, they are very inexpensive. Most listings I saw were under $10. I saw one that offered seven nibs for $4. So there's a lot of uh, vintage nib options to use with your new Esterbrook pen. Also included with the adapter is a converter which better fits this section. Um, I like that they have a little tag on here so you don't get it confused with which converter goes with this adapter. Now, I, I wish maybe there was a marking of some sort on the actual converter. Uh, now, this tag doesn't have an issue slipping in and out of the, uh, the pen and the barrel, but who knows, after years of handling it, this might come off. Now, also the shape of the section is different as well. It's more concave. Uh, I'm not sure why they didn't match the design on the main pen as well. Uh, maybe it was to avoid confusion, or maybe it had to do with the, uh, the necessities of uh, the actual nib unit that goes in here. Uh, the adapter section is also all black, which is different than the cobalt blue on the main section of this pen. Uh, so you can tell them apart this way. But for the black model of the SD, you can tell them apart by the section shape. Now, I know this would have been an added expense, but I wish that this adapter would have included some kind of tube where you could store the nib when you're not using it. Uh, that it comes with this bag. Where'd my bag go? There it is. Comes with this bag, but uh, you're not going to be able to store it in here inked. You got to commit to one or the other for the day, and then you have to clean it out fully uh, in order to put it in the bag, or else you're going to get ink all over it. The Esterbrook SD retails for $156 at Goulet Pens. Uh, I feel that that is an appropriate price for what you receive with this pen. Uh, would it have been nice for that price for them to include the adapter? Yes, but uh, I, I prefer it being uh, an optional purchase for those users who wanted to use it rather than them raising the price to like $200 and you get the adapter whether you would use it or not. Uh, the oversized version of this pen sells for $200, but the adapter is not included with that model either. Now, I've yet to get into real deep into vintage pens, so I really have no nostalgia or personal connection to the original Esterbrook pens, but I know that a lot of people do. Um, I'm just looking at the SD on its own, and on its own, it's a great pen. Uh, I like the size and the feel of this pen. Um, I like the way it feels in my hand. I, I like the looks, especially this cobalt model. And as you'll see in the writing sample, the nib on the SD is outstanding. 
Thanks again. Go out to Goulet Pens and Kenro Industries for providing this pen, as well as the uh, vintage adapter for review and for giveaway. If you would care to win this very pen and the adapter, uh, then all you need to do is be a subscriber to this channel uh, and leave a comment here on this video in YouTube. Uh, if you're a Patreon supporter, and I greatly appreciate your support, uh, you can alternately leave your entry comment there if you wish. Uh, today is Saturday, October 13th, 2018, and you have until end of day on Wednesday, October 17th to enter. Uh, that's a day longer than I normally keep a contest open, but I think a lot of folks out there would be interested in this pen, so I wanted to give more people the opportunity to enter. Uh, in regard to a comment topic, uh, while this is a modern pen, Estabrook is more known as a vintage brand. So why don't you let me know what your favorite vintage pen or vintage brand is? I'd be interested to hear what you're into. The comment topic is not required, it is just a suggestion. So, now it's time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Estabrook SD. Uh, that in regard to some other pens, this is what it looks like with a Pelican M805. Uh, and then here it is with a Lamy 2000 stainless steel. Uh, and then here it is with an Omos Ojiva cocktail. In regard to some other pens, uh, here it is with a Mont Blanc 146. Uh, then here it is with a Twisby Diamond 580. And here it is with a Pilot Vanishing Point. This is what the adapter looks like uh, in the section. Uh, and then this is the nib that mine came with, which was this fine uh, stub. And in order to install this, you literally just screw it in. And then we'll take a look at that here in the writing sample in just a second. So here we have a writing sample for the Estabrook SD. This is a medium steel nib and the ink that I'm using here today is Noodler's Liberty's Elysium. Uh, this is the bottle that it comes in. Uh, this is a, an ink that's exclusive for uh, noodlers to Goulet pens. Uh, and the bottles are always really nice for noodlers. Be careful when you open them. They will be always filled to the very brim. And they always have some interesting artwork as well. This is what the color looks like. It's a nice, deep, saturated blue. Uh, kind of reminds me a little bit of the Noodler's Bay State blue. Uh, and even something like the Omos blue. But it's, uh, like I said, it's a nice saturated blue. In regard to a writing sample, uh, that this Yovo nib is very nice that is on this pen. Um, it is very smooth. I find that it really just glides across the page. You're not going to get a ton of line variation out of this steel nib. And while the flow is very nice, while the flow is very nice, I feel this is kind of a rather dry ink and so that it doesn't necessarily, uh, it uh, doesn't necessarily smudge as much in regard to some reverse writing. It's a little bit on the scratchy side, but it gets the job done. In regard to some fast writing, there's no issues whatsoever. Okay, let's take a look at what this uh, fine stub will do. So we're gonna go ahead and just ink this up a little bit just to get a little bit of ink in there and wipe it off. Put this away carefully. 
And now we have a pen with a Esterbrook Vintage Fine Stub. So we're going to say that this is an Esterbrook Vintage Fine Stub. which is interesting to write with, um, that you get a little bit of a thicker line than you do on the downstroke, than you do on the side stroke, but it's not as, uh, as varied as some of the other stubs that you have. Uh, it has an interesting look and feel to it. So it's something that's worthwhile checking out. So that uh, there you have the Esterbrook Etsy Esty, excuse me. See, I went the whole video without calling it the uh, the Etsy, uh, but it is the Esty, uh, and that it's a an interesting new pen that I think a lot of people will enjoy because I think on its own uh, it's very good, and the opportunity to then incorporate some of the vintage aspects to it is a feature that uh, I, I think that the community will like. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later. So, you know what, let's ink up this fine stub and see what we can do with that. So, let me go ahead and go ahead and just ink this. Okay, when I visited Goulet pens a while back, they were actually very nice and gave me some Pilot branded chopsticks, which were kind of cool. So I'm going to use my Pilot branded chopsticks to try to extract this section from this bottle. It's like a game of operation. There we go. And the patient has been saved.